was the last speaker. I probably had the most to drink. So uh, I had to use the restroom before I got up here, so I rushed it. So, pardon me. Um, I'm Mitch Paoni, one half of Dia Studio. The other half is somewhere in the audience, who is also my wife, Meg Donahoe. So all right. So when I got here, I realized that I have 10 minutes. So I'm not starting the clock quite yet, because I haven't gotten my slides. Um, but I have a lot to say. I have a lot of process to, to kind of uncover about what we do in the studio and, uh, and how sort of my background as a musician and kind of my life experiences kind of put me on this stage today to talk to you. Before I get into it, all of the speakers tonight have been extremely inspiring and it's kind of humbling to even come after this because I'm just going to talk about fonts and design and stuff. So shallowest discussion of the night for sure. Um, anyway, I'll get into it. Uh, so yeah, um, that's me and, and Meg, shooting type out of our faces, you know, keeping it shallow. Uh, uh, and uh, so, the kind of covering title of sort of the process is idea of time is form, form is time. So thinking about how movement, all these different influences actually can come together to create visual form, concepts for graphic design, branding, whatever sort of comes together, and I think that really has driven a sort of foundation for the studio and shameless self-promotion, yep. Um, okay, so I'm gonna break into this. So we've kind of devised, there's two sides of how we work. There's the input and the output. Input is learning, technique, everything that sort of has happened in your lifetime up until that point. Improvisation is that point of creation that point of just doing, making, and creating things without being critical, just iterating and just playing with things. And then once you've produced things, you have an output, so the results, and therefore you can take a step back and take a look at that work and then sort of see what needs to be reflected on, improved on, and sort of pushed further. And I think it's very important that there's a separation between the two because that allows you just to make stuff and not worry about stuff as you do it, and I can get into that. So I'm gonna talk about the input for the next eight and a half minutes, and then kind of hit the output at the end. I think the input's more interesting. Um, to lead into this, so I started to be interested in arts, really had nothing to do with graphic design um, when I discovered the music, actually got into jazz, and then actually discovered the music of Herbie Hancock first. I think I was about 15 or 16 years old, released a record called Thrust. That's a live record in Japan, like the 70s. Nerdy jazz guys here might know what that is. You know, heard Chameleon and all this stuff. But I, I remember telling my parents, like, hey, I know I've been taking piano lessons, but like, I really want to learn this. And I was like, this point in time, I like knew profoundly that I wanted to understand and how to play jazz music, improvisational music. Something like really grabbed, grabbed me and touched me at that point in time. And then through Herbie, I discovered Wayne Shorter, and he's kind of served as like a life guru for me because he's, I think, almost 85, 86. He just won the Grammy for Best Jazz Album of the Year this year. So if you put that in perspective, this is a man who's at, clearly at the end of his lifetime creating some of the greatest work of his lifetime. So to think about that as a designer, you know, we have this kind of, oh, we're going to get 30, we're kind of a creative director, we're going to kind of stop and tell other people what to do kind of thing, but that guy's not doing that. He's continuing a lifetime of learning, trying stuff new, putting himself in a position that he doesn't understand to evolve his artwork. And to me, that's super inspiring and that just kind of keeps me going and to prove I play piano. So yeah, I can play a little bit of jazz. Um, anyway, I'll get into that. Um, and briefly, a little uh, cover up. So this is the chorus studio. So it's Megan, my, Meg and me. Deanna there on the right side, Daniel Winsel, and then June, who's, this is, this is South Korea, that's somewhere in Middle Europe and New York, this is our loosely geographically defined studio, and then I think it's important at also, although we have a small studio that I have people that I talk to that I have tremendous respect for and that serve as advisors to even look at work that have their own commercial practices or friends or collaborators or freelancers that really kind of push the work to another level that we can work with to demand much, I think, larger projects and things like that. So here's a larger selection. And in Central Europe, they're all type designers. I don't know why that's the case, but you know, Switzerland, they like type there. Um, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so anyway, identity. 
Why are you guys looking at a zebra? Uh, yeah, for real though. Um, because zebras are a part of the horse genius, and they come out of a history of evolution, and therefore this very specific part of Africa forms the very specific genius of zebra. Why do I bring this up? Um, because everything is connected. Um, no, but like to think about this, as a designer, we like, okay, font, color. What do you think about these fonts, Klein? Or do you like this cool, we're done? I was like, no, no. It's not just color, it's not just typefaces, it's everything that surrounds that, the context, the art history, the, the sound, the movement, the dance, the culture, all of that comes together to form a very specific identity. And that, to me, to look at something so holistically ha, ha, can profoundly influence an idea or a concept, and these are the things that I like to really think about. Specifically for tonight, yeah, the kinetic word, uh, yeah. I kind of want to kill the word kinetic typography now. I just want to say this moving text. Uh, um, so to drive down specifically, in animation and motion, there's, these are all based on natural fundamental things. So you think in physics, is a very basic understanding. These things move. Um, and they have a very character or a very specific um, feel to them that we can be influenced by and think about from a, a design concept in a way that can generate visual form and animation and move back and forth. And also, all this stuff can be really set up in a way that's, let's see, uh, generalized or programmable. So if you're talking about a graphic design context, that it actually can be literally defined in guidelines um, in essence. So to expand on that, back to the zebra. Uh, I get really interested in biomechanics. This uh, Edward Mybridge, it's like the late 1800s, photographer, filmmaker, created these sequences of images. So if you think about a horse running, the identifying characterist characteristic here not isn't necessarily the hair or the body of the horse, it's the mechanics and motion of it that give it its identity or form. And I makes me laugh because I tell this like story a thousand times. Like uh, one of our best friends. He's like, Mitch, I can tell you're from a mile away because it looks like you have a shit and green in your face and you're like wobbling back and forth. And, and he's like, but like, I'm like, how do you know it's me like from that far? Oh, it's like, because you wop, waddle like this. Like you have this walk, but you look like you're really happy all the time. And it made me think, I was like, so you've identified me by not what I look like, but how I move. So that kind of got me thinking about this, that everything really has a generalized motion or something that we can think about that can influence some system in a way, um, some sort of looping animation, some sort of identity that's all related into how the kinetic energy of that happens. And I think there's something quite dynamic in that that we can capture any frame and it has its own sort of, I don't know, dynamic energy, but it also is recognized as part of the same object and goes on and on like I, I get so excited about stuff that's just like googling science imagery on internet and stuff like that and just seeing these really cool sequences of images and seeing how that all works and this serves as kind of endless um, inspiration for just tests and animation and trying new things and then you see even just looking at this stuff that there's like wow there's a lot of just visual context that we can take and think about then how that sort of survives in a world of graphic design. Um, even the way like a caterpillar moves, for example. So, you know, that's a ridiculous thing, but going back to my point about identity, the fact that a caterpillar can be an exciting point of reference to think how something animates is maybe radically different, but it gets really exciting when you match the two. So I think this kind of process is something that we would get really excited about. So it's kind of like the motion of a snake, but using film techniques to capture that. Um, cool Let's thing about go. humans, cha -cha, real smooth. we can dance and we can make music. And so if you were a part of the 1990s club scene in the UK and dropped a bunch of ecstasy, you would be very familiar with the uh, liquid dance and techno scene. If you're part of the New Orleans second line dancing and in a funeral, you would be experiencing this kind of dance, this kind of style, this kind of rhythm. If you were part of the classical, you know, French 1800s, um, bougie. 
class, uh, you would be interested in ballet. But what's interesting about this is their cultural references that drive the music, that drive the sound, that drive the rhythm, that create a very specific art form from that. And those things that we can think about in animation or in design, we can start to compose and create things that move, that reference just like a composer and sound does or a choreographer can do. And last but not least, the masters of it, the Jabberwockies, are breaking down very specific components of music to create their dance moves with. And I find this quite fascinating to think about, well, how can we translate this into something that is moving or animating? So I'm gonna fly through this. I don't know where I'm in time, but you break down sort of the fundamental rhythms. You have the sound there. So you see how I'm connecting sound. I'm connecting choreography. I'm connecting cultural context of music and rhythm and ultimately can create these compositions. In this case, it's no different than an identity system for a score of music are no different from the, just the way it's executed is a different way of saying that. And artists have kind of looked into this. This is a piece by John de Tesere looking at a Bach piece to see how visually we can create something. And I find this fascinating because it feels dynamic and musical, but it feels very graphic at the same time. Um, lab notations, very beautiful stuff. This is kind of informal notation from choreographers trying to show, match the music to the dancers and how they're supposed to move. And you see how these visual systems come out of that. And this is not even really anything related to graphic design, but this fundamental strictness of how our bodies can move, but how expressive it can be at the same time. I like this interplay between the two. Um, I'm just going to keep moving forward that. So, and this is more examples. Um, and then now it's 2019, and this is the current state of our lives. Um, we have a technology that sort of enables us to operate communication and design systems through screens, interactivity, and all that stuff. And going back to Minority Report, uh, that's a reality in probably five years. This might even be like an old reference for people that might age me, because I thought this was a cool movie. Yeah. Um, People are like, I've never heard of this movie because I'm in my younger 20s. Um, but it, given that, the guys in the street cart were like already hip to this. Like, wow, we got these like animated screens that we can like shred type with and like, oh, you, oh, wait a minute, you didn't, I skipped that slide, yeah. Quite important. Uh, yeah, the hot dog sales were way beyond the uh, trend here. Um, in, the, in the US, obviously we have the tech thing going on. We are spending a lot of money and effort putting ears and noses on people's faces in Instagram. So, but why can't we think about this in graphic design? So in that case, to reel it back a little bit, we have to evolve the tools we use, no different than in music. So an organ, to a harpsichord, to a piano, to a synthesizer, to an MPC, to software. So we can evolve the tools you use to deal with the current state of communications of the work. So therefore we have to be creative with the tools to be operating in a specific period of time. So this is just some examples of some things where we're thinking about specialized coded design software to create things. So, all right, there's a process of DS Studio in seven and a half minutes. Um, so you take Wayne Shorter, horses, pianos, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, code, maniac shit, <laughs> and then you mix it up. And this is an average day at Tia Studio, six hours of pure improvisation and jazz. And then what happens is this. So, 
to Zion, once upon a time, or for maybe still happening, this like idea of we make a still, like, hey, maybe we should make it move. Oh, we need to make a website, so therefore it should animate. I don't, I think this is like uh, completely obsolete. Like, we need to think about everything in equality, interaction, animation, still, all this visual form comes together because we have to deal with experiences that live beyond a lot of different formats, whether it's interactive, VR, 360 camera, all this stuff that we have to deal with because of capitalism and selling, selling stuff, you know, the important things. But I think as some, to echo some previous things, we have to take advantage of that. We know the train's moving, but how do we utilize that as artists or designers to evolve what we do in a way that's responsibly? So I think in a more direct thing, that becomes the process becomes about less labor, but be more curatorial about the work. So you have tools that ultimately generate things for you. And then we can take a sit, step back and kind of decide from an intuitive standpoint of what's working, what's not working. This comes back from kind of a jazzy point of view or a musical point of view of like, does this feel good or does this not feel good? And I think from a editing process, I get excited about that because that removes me as the designer, it removes the team as the designer, and we move in a way that comes like, if that doesn't hit us or make us feel a certain way, then therefore it's not gonna connect possibly to certain audiences. So to conclude a little, this is why Wayne Shorter is like my guru, so I'm like food for thought. Resistance is what an airplane needs to take off. So it's kind of like, don't really know where he's going with that. Um, so, but you know, it, it's kind of misunderstood. And I think for anybody who's doing design, fine arts, who doesn't really, really matter, if, if you feel you're using stuff that is personal to you and the things that you love and care about and you transfer that into the work, you will probably be misunderstood, but you shouldn't, let that be an issue is I think is sticking to your guns eventually the plane does take off in a way and I'm gonna let these fantastic musicians sort of finish this off for me this is John Baptiste and Wayne Shorter just talking about process what are you trying to relate to them that feeling what are you what's your intent well actually the intent now is to um, uh, throw away in kind of Put away everything that was learned, the, the studied stuff. Uh, again, I always refer, because Miles is the only one that would talk like this. He'd say, Wayne, he, he said, hey, Wayne, do you ever feel like you want to play? Uh, he said, you want to play like you don't know how to play? <laughs> and then he said, do you feel like you'd like to play music that doesn't sound like music? That doesn't sound, I know it's right. familiar. And I have a tape of Charlie Parker giving a lesson, and the, the student says, Mr. Parker, I have to learn all these scales, I have to all, memorize all these scales. And, and Bird said, Yes, and after you finish, and finish learning them, forget them. Right. Play as if you don't know all of that stuff, or you're not playing a scale, but you're playing straight from the heart. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you.